Welcome friends to episode one of Managing Sweden. This is going to be, of course, an international management save. I've never managed a international team before in any of the football managers. Start game as international manager and select Sweden. So here we go, I'm going to select advanced setup for this. It gives us an amount of nations to start with. So for example, it gives you a major nation and it gives you a star. Now, I wanted to select all of the major nations with the stars because if that's what the game says I should do, then that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put all of these nations in there, but I'm going to put them as like the top leagues only because otherwise it's going to take ages to uh, to uh, manage the save. So Norway is a major ma Norway is a neighboring nation. You got Italy, you got Germany, France, Finland, England, Denmark. Yeah, so that's all of the starred nations. So let's check them out. Swedish first division. I can't get my words out today. Swedish first division elite and above. Well, that's Al Svensson. Al Svenskan again. Can't get my words out. Um, I'm going to put all of these as Premier Division. So here it says neighbouring nation. So Superliga. Uh, we'll do that to. Actually, we might do that to League Two. Uh, finish Premier League, uh, again neighbouring nation, League One, First Division, Serie A, Premier Division, and First, can we do First, yeah, I don't want it to take too long. That's actually not too bad, three and a half stars. Processing break should be acceptable with this setup. There we go. So. Um, I want to explain why I'm starting when I'm starting. So let's have a look in here. So Zlatan obviously is part of the Sweden setup and in real life he is retired. I did go into the game just to double check when he retires and it's after August 2nd. So I want to make sure that I start the save before the first friendly and before before the qualifying rounds for the next tournament. So let's get into that quickly. In this save, I want to do two tournaments, if I can keep the job, of course. I want to do at least two tournaments. Um, I'm s I'll, go, I'll go into all the rest of the rules as we start the save. I think I'm going to start first matches. I'm going to start here, 9th for the 8th. Because I know that it's the 2nd slash 3rd of August that Zlatan retires. And then I could just start from a fresh slate. So uh, there we go. So we're going to start on the 9th of August 2016. And let's get into it. I'll see you in a second. Nationality English. Place of birth. Farnborough. <coughs> Favourite team is Liverpool. Handle tasks myself. I won't put any of these links in there because then that will spoil results before I recorded stuff. So, uh, male, don't assume the gender though. 24th of December 1998. 1998? I think you'll find, Rich, that your birthday is 1988 because you're 27, not 17. Now, I got my height here as a, I got my height here as about 175 centimeters. But if I put myself at a sort of more normal weight. The game thinks I look like this when I don't. So uh, that's why I'm going to put it at a more respectable size. Otherwise, it thinks that I'm fucking huge. Um, we're going to generate from a 3D face model. Let's generate from this lovely picture. I've uh, I've been uploading pictures of my uh, uh, progress of my mustache. So and we've got to put a little dot in where it says so we'll just do our best and then we'll actually I'll clear that uh, we'll try and select the best places generate model let's see how bad this looks manager on the touchline why have I unlocked that you used photo fit for your manager profile but I've done that already I've done that before the eyes don't look right. Look like Mesut Ertzil. 
Oh well, that that will do. Um, actually, I look I look a little bit thin there. Come on, put some weight on. Put some weight on. There you go. That's better. Um, skin tone. Yep, I'm black. Now I'm pretty pale, and I'd say not quite paler than pale though. Hairstyle. Let's go through all these afros and such. I think that will do. We don't want to spend too long. Facial hair one. There, let's go for a little moustache. Let's go for a little brown moustache and glasses. There we go. Frames colour. We can have a blue frames. I'll have I have blue frames for Sweden. I'm going to be a tracksuit manager. And then we're going to do yellow and blue. Oh, look at that, guys. And then those are going to be blue. Oh, look at that. And the boots can be yellow as well. Look at that, yellow boots. That is, guys, that's, that's the manager. Look at this, guys. Definitely don't look like a pedo. That works, that works. Second nationality or other languages spoken. I wanted to mention this. I'm, I'm learning Swedish at the moment, and I'm, I'm not fluent, right? But my second nationality is Scottish. Okay, it does say here Swedish as additional languages spoken. So, that's good, that's good. So I didn't have to scrap the profile. Uh, good adaptability and I can speak some Swedish so hopefully the players will understand me and to be honest Sweden's second language is English so you should be able to understand a Galen Englishman no let me try that again a Galen Engelsman crazy Englishman anyway let us start so here we go guys we are in we are now the new manager of Sweden let's just quickly go through these things and then I'll start doing some talking so it says here, this is from Isabella Ahifqvist, Sweden Appoint Hope as manager. The Swedish FA have today announced the appointment of Rich Hope as the new national team manager. It is thought that Hope will be given the task of ensuring good performances as he gets to grips with his new role. Rich is reported to be earning 2700 a week. Spot on. With a total lack of previous managerial experiences, this could be the right role for Hope and could provide the perfect stage to showcase his skills and prove himself. Swedish FA indicate their expectations. Uh, it says here the minimum expectations is that the team reach the playoff of the World Cup and the first game in charge is against Switzerland on the 31st of August in a friendly. Injury update. Here's some injuries. And welcome to the Swedish setup. Peter Wettengren. We'll be talking to this guy a lot, so here we go. Um, I would I would like to welcome you to the Sweden setup, and I'm looking forward to forging a strong working relationship with you. As Sweden manager, you have overall control of the entire international setup, including Sweden B, under 21s, 19s, with the responsibility of hiring and firing youth team managers or taking charge yourself. You do possess international experience in your backroom setup with Jonas Stern and Tobias Linderoth having represented their countries during their playing days. Right, so now this is where we start and I'm going to tell you some things about the save moving forward. So this is going to be my new baby. This is I'm, I'm hoping for this to be a fairly long term save. I don't intend to quit and go into club management or anything like that. Um, I'm hoping the the goal is to get Sweden to the World Cup. Um, I want to do two tournaments, but the World Cup's the next tournament. Uh, if I can't get them in the tournament, I'm, the, the very first goal is to get to a tournament, right? I want to do at least two tournaments in the save. Can I do two back-to-back -back tournaments? I don't know, because Sweden in real life just qualified for the Euros in 2016 in this year. So, it's going to be a tough ask. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is retired. So, what I really want to do is I want to focus on youth. And I want to have experience in there as well. I know a lot of the players in the Swedish Alsvenskan, or some of the players. My goal is to try to take a lot of players in Alsvenskan and use them. 
I don't want to uh, use too many players throughout scattered around the world in the national team. I want to think as if I am Swedish. I want to think like, okay, what what would a Swedish person want? They would want players that are playing in their country to play for their country. So I'm going to try and choose a lot of youth, um, players like John Gedetti and Emil Forsberg um, are going to be vital to this save, I think at least. Just a little background as well, uh, Sweden under 21s won the European Championship last year, 2015 I think. Uh, they won it against Portugal um, and along the way they beat France it's a, just a meme from the picture I'll show you the picture uh, they beat France along the way and they also beat Denmark I think it was 4-0 and that was the infamous John Gadetti speech where he said we are the best Sweden is the best in in Scandinavia you know sod off Denmark you're nothing you're nothing so I found that quite funny um, yeah, so I want to use a lot of youth. I want to be the kind of manager that speaks to the club managers, that has a good working relationship with them. And yeah, I just want to really get my teeth into this one. Where are we going to make our start here? So let's look at the schedule first of all. So Switzerland comes up first, that's a friendly. Then we have got Belarus, France, Bulgaria and Holland. So here's the World Cup groups that's the first that's the only time you'll see Andorra top of the group <laughs> um, yeah I'm looking forward to this Isaacson Isaac Isaacson reconsider international retirement so he's retired I didn't know he was retired did you know that that goalkeeper by the way that he's got the same um, date of birth as Latan uh, 3rd of the 10th, 1981, if we go Zlatan Ibrahimovic, 3rd of the 10th, 1981. Got the same date of birth. That's amazing, isn't it? Um, but yeah, he's retired now, so I'm not going to continue with him, of course. Yeah, so here's all the first team players. So that's the two goalkeepers that I've got there. So it's looking like I've got Carl Johan Jonsson, Lustig, I know Lustig. He is Celtic, yes. We've got three right backs here. That's going to be a problem. Uh, Oscar Wendt, Martin Olsen, Eric Johansson, uh, Andreas Grunkvist. He's probably the, I'd imagine he's probably the captain. Philippe Hellander, uh, centre back. Ah, right winger here. Nabal Bahu, um, beautiful Swedish name. Uh, Simon Tibling, or Simon Tibling. Simon, that he's got quite good potential. Sebastian Larson, wouldn't be surprised if he retires soon. Albin Ekdal, I've heard of him. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Hijmark. Robin Quaison. I I once bought him for Liverpool actually. No. No I didn't. I bought him for uh it was either Kalmar FF or Oscar Sam when I managed in Sweden. Uh he's injured. Emil Forsbury, now he is going to be a really important player. Who does he play for? Red Bull Salzburg, is it? It's probably Red Bull Salzburg. Oh no, Leipzig, Leipzig, whatever. Um, Ola Toivonen, he is old as hell. He's been around, hasn't he? Premier Division. Oh, he played for Sunderland for... He only made 12 appearances, no goals. Then he went to Toulouse. That's good. Marcus Barry. All right, and John Gudetti. John Gudetti. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. He's going to be the main man for us, guys. What have we got in the first team? We've got two goalkeepers, three right backs, two left backs, only three centre backs, a right and a left midfielder, three central midfielders, a right and a left attacking midfielder, one 
attacking midfielder centre and two strikers that's going to be interesting B team nothing under 21s I mean there's going to have to be some players coming up I think um, looking at that we've got a hell of a lot of potential in the under 21s look at that these are fantastic looking players under 19s yep we've got some we've got some in there youth prospects <laughs> look at the little baby bottle hard working so they're a hard working team good decision making good teamwork good first touch and passing good leadership apparently a good defense I think what I plan to do in this episode is go through a couple of tactics that I'm going to uh, first start off with and then hopefully play that friendly game against Switzerland and then I'm going to get into the qualifiers I'm not sure if I'm going to skip some qualifiers and play some others we'll see how it goes um, but let me know what you think in the comments what how I should do that should I should I play live each qualifier because it's going to take a while I know a lot of football manager uh, youtubers out there do a few matches and then come back but then that's usually on a club save so I'm not sure how I'm going to do it on an international save anyway I've I had a couple of tactics in mind although one tactic I was going to make kind of a 4-4-2 and I'm not sure if that's going to work too well with the amount of strikers that I've got in the team I want to do a kind of a 4-4-2 um, but I was thinking about a diamond that wouldn't be a really good idea though I'm not not as an attacking midfielder there but perhaps you could do something like that instead of the actual diamond you you bring back the attacking midfielder and put him there so something like that or you could even say wing backs I prefer complete wing backs actually uh, you could even say complete wing backs like that and then with these guys I would want them to tuck in and be kind of central so we would probably have a fairly narrow formation if if we're going to do it like that so something like that and then the other formation that I like to do um, this is when I feel like we're not a good team I tend to do a a flat back four something like that and usually with this as well I think I usually play with complete wing backs um, I'm just thinking about how I did it before but I would do complete wing back support then I would have that one on structured counter this one I'd have on fluid and control something like that but I would probably go with you know your standard 4-1-2 what how do you call that do you call it a 4-3-3 or do you call it a 4-1-2-3 wouldn't you say 1 4 one, four, one. that's interesting I like to use false nines so again something like that and again I I pretty much always play with wing backs because I like the formations I like these guys at the top to go inside a little bit and then I like the width to come from the wings so we'll continue ahead my first press conference guys there's a lot of pressure on national managers to hit the ground running and produce results from the off are you confident that you'll be able to get a good start I'll be cautious we're working towards a positive start the pressures of managing at international level are enormous and this is reflected by the huge media interest that surrounds both team and manager there's a lot of pressure to handle are you up to it I understand the pressures that come with this job and I will thrive under them you've taken up the step into football management despite being just 27 years of age critics have suggested that you will struggle to command respect in a dressing room that contains players older than you are what do you say to that there are plenty of examples of young managers there are plenty of examples of young management I can't read today there are plenty of examples of young managers having success in the game I believe I can be one of them what made you take this job 
I think that ambition is fantastic, they want to be successful, and they will not compromise being the best. Are uh, Yog Elska Svarje. I don't have the uh, um, Swedish keys, otherwise it would say like Jag Elska with an E with two dots. That means I love Sweden. Many people believe that an English manager could never be as effective as at managing Sweden as a native resident. Do you think nationality matters when it comes to success in international management? I know Swedish, innit? It seems to carry some importance to the fans and the media. While some managers... Managers? Why am I saying this? While some managers are famous for their hands-on approach, others maintain a more reserved manner. How do you see your management style? Valued as people. Um, in modern era, players are put under greater demands by sheer number of matches they play for their clubs. Will you be looking to develop a positive relationship with other managers in order to find ways to prevent players burning out? Of course clubs are going to be concerned about their players and that's something I have to work with. And there we go, that's our first press conference, baby. Out of the way. 20 days time we've got that... Swear, Swit, Swend? I was going to say Swendly with Fitzerland. Fritzerland. No, Fritzel. Um, yeah, we've got that friendly coming up. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to finally getting to see my players in action. And finally getting them to know me as their manager. And taking, taking to me as an English manager, managing the Swedish national team. Um, I really want to get hold of the players before I can look at tactics. This is going to be this is going to be the hardest challenge, right? Because it's not club football. I'm not going to have hold of the players for uh, as much time as I would want. So look at this. I've taken the fixtures to attend. This is brilliant, guys. Attending my first game as Swedish manager at Old Toilet. I mean Old Trafford. Oh, they've scored. Is there anything that I can say to exit the game? Can I exit the game? Can I leave? I can leave the match after 10 minutes. If West Brom don't score, I'm probably going to leave the match at half time. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. What? Hang on. Actually, why am I watching this game? Who's the? What Swedish player am I watching? Jonas Olsen. So Jonas Olsen is playing. And he's apparently part of the Swedish national setup at 33 years old. And he's a centre back. He's obviously not playing, it says playing okay down here. But he's not playing okay. Because cause they're, they're shit. I, I'm running the rule over Jonas Olsen here. And I'm not too impressed with him, to be honest. Alright, I'm leaving the match. I'm leaving early. I had to get out. The, the traffic was terrible. So. They won that match. That's that's good. And how did how did Jonas Olsen play? He got subbed off on the seventy first minute. Yeah, I don't think he's really gonna be a big part of uh my Swedish national team. Oh, I like how it says that I was spotted at Old Trafford, England thirteenth, that's probably about right. Uh where are we? So we're below we're below Iran. Sweden boss must make tough choices. He will be faced with a selection headache on 24th of August when he comes to select his Sweden. Sweden? <laughs> uh, I'm talking a different language as well. His Sweden squad to face Switzerland and... I mean, try and say this three times over. Select his Sweden squad to face Switzerland and Belarus. Uh, Robin Kaison and Sebastian Larsson will definitely miss out. Do you know then, we might actually be able to face Belarus in that next game. I might actually do that one game. Wettergren suggests potential Sweden. Sweden! Alright, I've put together a suggested 23-man squad. I'm probably not going to take you-know-who, Jonas Olsen. Oh, I can do a quick pick now. That's good. Alright, what about our first squad there? What kind of players have we got? So we've got Marcus Barry 
and Gudetti. Gudetti is best as a complete forward, but I would rather do him as a support. Forsbury is okay as a winger. I was thinking about doing a pressing game, but I'm not 100% sure if a, if at international level we'll be able to do that. So we'll see. This is some opposition instructions that I've been using from a tactic from Pav Pav Gigan pressing. I'm not going to use the actual tactic itself, but the opposition instructions I like because I've watched the play back uh, in some matches, and this they really do press for the ball. So I'm going to try it out. It might not work because again I'm I was using that on a Liverpool save and it might not work at all but I just wanted to try that out to see what happens if I use it I'll do mixed passing so I don't think the passing is Barcelona-esque so we'll do mix, mixed passing and I'm going to try to exploit the middle in this formation um, some of this help I'm getting from that tactic but a lot of it is going to be from my own ideas I want to work the ball into the box and look for an overlap as well. So that's with that one. Uh, this one, I'm going to do structure counter, and I'm going to do a lower tempo, a narrow again. We're going to do a slightly deeper defensive line. We're still going to try and win the. Uh, we'd win the ball back a little bit um, pump the ball into the box that one we'll do that as di direct passing hit early crosses stick to positions that's going to be our park the bus formation we'll try to play out from the back with that one and we'll try to play shorter passing yeah so that's good I think that's good set pieces so for free kicks we really want Jimmy on those let's have a look what we've got here so that's our setup we haven't got any specific player instructions so to speak not not any that I've picked anyway we'll see what we're gonna start with so this is our formations by the way that looks like Berg B-E-R-G but it's actually pronounced Bari in Swedish, Marcus Bari. The word Berg in Swedish is actually the word for gay. That's B E R G, gay. Um, so if you call someone, if you say Marcus Berg, it sounds like you're saying Marcus Gay. I just thought I just thought I'd mention that. Um, I'm not going to attend any games, so I can't be bothered. Don't we have staff that can just do that for me? This video, I warn you, this video might be a bit of a long one to open up with, but I don't mind. Lustig at right back, Gronkvist in the middle with Lindelof, the youngster, coming in. Um, who else have we got at centre back? Yolanda. Lindelof's going to be important for us though. Went at left wing back, uh, Lewicki, or Lewicki? Lewicki, Lewicki, he's from Poland, probably. Uh, Ekdal, Forsberry, Bahui, Gudetti, and Niemann up front as well. He's just a youngster, but I don't have many other options. Let's just check Strandberry. No, I don't have many options up front. That's going to be a big problem. Anyway, let's get started in this match. Enough waffling on. I'm excited to start this match guys, I'm excited to start my career, um, I want to be a successful Swedish manager, um, I'm playing against Switzerland away, why did I actually do that home formation, I'm not too sure, um, but I'm going to go for it, um, we've looked good in training, um, look at that, they're playing a Christmas tree, that's actually, that's actually not too attacking is it, there's a huge gap in midfield, but, as I told you, that we don't have many, many options, if any options, in attacking midfield. So this could work away from home. I'm a little bit worried. That's our option. That's our uh, closing down options there. So, yeah, let's go to Team Talk. Quite passionately, quite cautiously. Say good luck. 
and then cautiously I'll say to them I have faith in you I have faith in you I have faith in you right let's let's start the match we do highlights on extended we'll do data analyst view um, I'm gonna play the highlights like this I like to watch data analyst I'm a 2d guy right but data analyst allows me to watch almost like a 2d mode here's Gudetti and it's, it's in it's Christopher Neiman Christopher Neiman has scored the first goal for my managerial career sorry if I just blew your ears off there guys but what a cross from Gudetti to Neiman what a great start to my international career it's Switzerland nil Sweden won I can't imagine I'm going to win this though if I'm being honest I'm, I'm being optimistic I'm being optimistic right we're one nil up this is the formation that I kind of want as our default formation but um, you know it's the first match and it's only international management so I can't tinker as much as I would want to you have to um, no no oh there goal kick here we go let me know if you think the match is being played too fast as well I might actually just pull that back slightly so we can maybe see it a little bit slower so there's Johnson with the save I think his name will be Jonsson actually and so we should probably pronounce it in Swedish and there's Shakiri. Shakiri still and it's shot in and it's over the bar Zuffi with a free kick and Jonsson grabs that easily and here we go Rodriguez and it's been stolen that's that counter pressing Gudetti oh and it's so close oh the uh, the counter pressing that we've got on there it it can work for a number of different formations I think but I'm not an expert guys so just don't think that I'm an expert at this game I'm not I might waffle on a lot in this match this is the first match so I'm quite nervous it's only a friendly but I want to make a good impression and Neiman has made a very good impression on me and Gudetti um, that's why I hmm? that's why I put I wanted Gudetti to play kind of a bit behind because he's this when I watched him in real life he's like this tough battling center forward kind of and I want him to kind of like this like he's gonna hold the ball up he's gonna be quite strong Force Barry, get a crossing, can he get a crossing? And it's Bowie! It's Switzerland nil, Sweden two! Can if you could call me a god, I don't want to speak too quickly, but Forsberry with the cross there. And Bahui, I'm gonna call him Bahui with a goal. It's Switzerland nil, Sweden two. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, I want to say calmly keep your performance levels up I don't want to say great performance just yet because I'm, I am worried and I may change something late on to the kind of squeaky bum formation but at the moment touch word don't want to say anything yet uh, it's going okay but I want to wait I, I, I always like to wait before saying something because you know how football manager is alright so that's Bahui along the right can't keep the ball Bahui again Ekdal Lewicki, Gudetti, Neiman. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting used to these names. I, you know, I'm really starting to um, get into this. Even in the first match, I'm starting to get all the names and and uh, get used to some of the players. I'm sure there will be many changes in the squad by the time any potential tournament comes along. This is not a qualifying match. Just so that you know, this is a friendly. In case you didn't know, um, and qualifying matches is it Belarus I think it's Belarus or Bulgaria I think it's Belarus though there's Went Forsbury crosses it in Bahui oh he's such a threat on that right hand side um, I will make some changes probably soon don't want any injuries just wait for this last one here Ekdal Forsbury Gudetti oh it's so close from Gudetti okay right now what are we gonna do here we don't want to change the formation just yet um, I want Cargren to get a run out so I'll put him in goal Hamad is not doing too well Wahlqvist put him on for Grunkvist there I know that's changing a 
defender, but I just I want to try and keep my best players fit. There's Carl Green goal, the youngster from Icor. There's Gudetti, Stocker for Switzerland. Fry, Stocker, Granit Xhaka. No, it's back to Sweden. Neiman there. What can Neiman do? He didn't produce anything there. But goalkeeper Lopar gets the ball quite easily. And what have we got next? Uh, we are 78 minutes in. And Sweden... Let's have a look, actually. In good control of this game, actually. 55% possession. Two clear-cut chances. Two goals. Six on target. Ten shots. Switzerland... Uh, with it all to do now. Lichtensteiner, very good right back. Stocker, Shakiri, and Karlgren with the safe hands there. I may end up changing the formation now. And they're just probably going to score on that bit now. Alright, so I think we're going to keep Gidetti on. Oops, undo last. Alright. Let's change to this squeaky bum formation. Sebastian Eriksson or Oscar Heijemark. Heijemark can come on, confirm changes, and just say calmly, I've got faith in you, and we'll go from here. Can we change it before they score? Okay, offside, that's great. So, formation changed, so we'll see. Can we see the game out with this? Should we give them a little calm concentrate? everyone's favorite uh, thing so we don't concede any goals 90 minutes in Wildquist, Ekdal, Karlgren is he gonna punt the ball up he does went but maybe that wasn't a good choice and Gudetti is he gonna win it no nope. and there we go First match in charge of the national team Switzerland away Sweden two. I, I mean Switzerland away and it was 2-0 away from home and I actually thought I made a mistake from using the home formation the sort of attacking formation at Switzerland but I used it and it worked so <laughs> I want to use it in the next match actually so we are going to go on to the qualifying match now Stranbury is a little bit he's one of those bad apples and I'm thinking that you know, what I, what I do want in the team is I want harmony. I want squad harmony. So I'm going to try not to say anything that is a little bit crazy or out there. I want the good squad harmony for this team. First qualifying match. Let's get the Switzerland match out of out of our minds because it doesn't count. So they're going to be quite hard to break down. They've got two defensive midfielders and a centre midfielder. Although. I'm just thinking, these guys are going to cut in a little bit. We're, we're playing quite narrow. And they are playing... We're playing narrow with wingbacks. Which is interesting. Do gum la do fria do Do tista Right, here's the table, guys. The table, the stats. We've got the performance over here. So, we'll see how it goes. There's Forsberry with a free kick. And very close. In the opening minutes of this match. Can we take the lead at the top of the table? Or will Belarus shock us in our first opening match? Oh, I thought that was going in. These are the kind of matches that you've got to win. I mean, it's, it's a home match, first of all. And it's Belarus. And they're not one of the top seeded sides. If you can't win these matches, then then you you've got to win against like I've got France and Holland in here. Let's let's put it that way. So uh, they're going to be breathing down my neck. <laughs> they're going to be really pushing for qualification. I would expect. So we need to be good, win our home games, and see what we can do in those tough away games as well. That's Forsbury on the left. Can he get across in? No. Nope. But Lindelof has got a yellow card. He needs to be careful. Bahui, could he cross it in? Buddy, oh, very, very close. Got to be careful. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if I could do 
uh, a cautious calm down on one on that player because I'm just a bit worried about him getting sent off Lindlerf and it's forced buddy yes Emil force buddy he has scored and where does that put Sweden second in the table only in the first match but it looks like France are winning as well but that's 1-0 and that's you know it's getting us one step further to qualification it's going to be a long haul on qualification what is it 10 matches because it's six teams so you face five teams twice 10 matches yeah that makes sense so every point is going to count every single point is going to count even a, a one I'd be happy with even a 1-0 victory just any kind of victory uh, any points on the board and I'm happy with it but I do want to win in style I do want to make it look good if possible everyone wants to do that and a little bit more possession now it's quite even possession had more shots I think there's room for improvement in the second half I'm gonna say cautiously that you weren't that bad but you can still improve oh, my team talks are crap I need to maybe get some more coaching badges I don't know if I can get more coaching badges um, while I'm playing in an international setup cross it in nothing happens um, let's see Lindelof is a problem with that yellow card there let's be careful with that I've got them on get stuck in so I am worried a little bit about their cards we've only played one match so and it's buddy and it's a goal it's Marcus buddy 2-0 with top of the group now I do get rather excited I must warn you I do get rather excited and, and he just ghosted through that player there literally glitched through him well done uh, SI uh, but no it probably was meant to look different but you know uh, with these football manager games they, they some animations look different or look dumb as to what they're supposed to be touch wood still haven't conceded a goal yet second match in I'm sitting up quite straight now. I'm, I'm kind of concentrating so much. Lustig, buddy, oh, so close there. I am thinking about getting Neiman on. I'm wondering about John Gudetti. Um, do I put Neiman on for Gudetti, or do I put, do I rest Buddy because he's just come back from uh, a little injury? Lewitsky, Ekdal, Gudetti. I do want more from Gudetti. I do want him to get some goals. Um, but I'm going to take off. I wonder if I could put Neiman on. And maybe Strand Buddy. What? That's annoying. I'm not going to put Strandbury on then. Buddy. Um, Sebastian Eriksson can go there and then we've got a center back that we can have I'm changing a lot right now but I'm worried about that yellow card on Lindelof oh crap and now we've got a yellow card on Grankfist and I've made all my changes um, let's do let's just stick with this formation but we'll stick it on counter because I think that Belarus will try to get forward a little bit more now. We are the home team, but I... Oh, it's Neiman! Oh, Neiman nearly with another goal! Um, let's see, it's Ekdal. Buddy. Eriksson. Can Forsberg get a cross in? No, is it going to be a corner? The group is looking a little bit like how I'd expect it to finish at the moment. France, Holland, Sweden. Probably in that order. I wouldn't... If I can get first or second, that would be an absolute miracle, in my opinion. Um, let's see if we can get this goal. No. Goal difference could be important, but it's a 2-0 victory, guys, and I'm pretty happy with that. Well done, lads. That was a good win. So there you go. And uh, France won 3-0 against Bulgaria. And Holland won 3-0 against Luxembourg. Um... I mean, yeah, Belarus, Bulgaria, Luxembourg. They're the teams that you've got to beat. If you don't beat those teams, you're in trouble. I think, is the playoffs... Um, 
Let me just check. Cause is the playoffs the third or is it the second spot? Because that could be a worry. Let's just double check. Reach playoff. What? What is the playoff then? Surely that's the third spot, right? Because there will be a lot of teams that go home. Um, okay, assertive. I think I'm going to skip through some of this stuff. Sweden can build on victory. Right then, so our next games are France, Bulgaria and Holland. Um, I'm pretty happy with that so far. So it's my first squad um, and I've done alright and I've won 2-0 and 2-0. No goals conceded. Alright guys, so let me know if you enjoyed this video and let me know how if there's any improvements I can make or if you've got any tips or advice for me as a international manager that would be great the next match is going to be France away I think I'm probably going to play with our second formation like that and that because it's kind of game where I'd expect to lose so I think I'm going to go with that let me know if you've got any tips for these difficult away games against France and Holland um, the other away games Luxembourg Belarus I might play with the home formation uh, on those or I might do the third formation to see I might do that third formation in a friendly we'll, we'll see how it goes but I'm this is the first batch of matches that I've got here which is are they all this year yeah they're all this year heading into November which is the last one um, I might arrange some friendlies after that so maybe give me some advice and see what I can do maybe we can arrange a friendly with England that would be fun anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe to the new channel it's a new channel it's not green ring gaming anymore it's a new channel so make sure you like and share as well and I'll see you in the next one bye bye